untuk yang sunscreen terbeli pak jadi mohon dijadikan untuk jadi kohos oke okay. thank you I said everyone can share the PowerPoint. Okay, we are ready to continue our meeting. So, please together we say basmalah together. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. I hope you well in the morning in the meeting, and thank you for your coming and participating. The lecture. Alhamdulillah, wa syukurillah, la haula wa la kuata ilah bila. Allah masyalli wa salim wa barang ala nabiina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbiya cumain. Once again, I would like to thank you for your participation, and we continue our presentation. Insya Allah, we talk about. Contribution and the development of the word civilization, yeah, about the Islam, Islamic contribution for the development civilization. And Raihan, for you, the time is yours. As moderator. Thank you, Pak Khairul. Okay. Thank you, Pak Khairul. You're welcome. Today, today we would like to hear the presentation from Group A. Uh, <clears throat> before we begin, let me introduce myself. My name is Ryan Olya Dafa as the as the moderator in this meeting. <clears throat> for the for the group 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 eight, please. Uh, the time is yours to share the the PowerPoint. Uh, sorry, can you see it, the PowerPoint? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning, everyone. We are from Group 8, and member of our group the first one is Mahan Aryoseto and the second one is me is Nadila Rochelina Nurdin and the third one is Tuli Fawiruzi Nanda Hidayat and the, uh, the topic of our presentation it's about the contribution of Islam in development of world civilization is next Uh, is next. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So we will begin the presentation of our topic. So the first is background. Humans were created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the grace and reason to reach the pinnacle of glory and civilization. Islam has been born since 140, 140. 
140 years ago in the days of ignorance or jahiliya, Islam has the definition of a global and universal religion that represents a perfect and a comprehensive Islamic civilization in spiritually, morally, and materially. In its development, Islam has found many things that are very useful for the world. History proves that Islam has a major contribution to most of the science in the world. The contribution of Islam to civilization can be seen through change by increasing research, science, extracting information, discovery and development then it is directed to the balance of life that way islam can become the basis of civilization which can create a new civilization control civilization protect civilization and ultimately and ultimately become a protector of the universe so the next the next slide will be presented by our friend, which is really. Okay, so here is the growth and development of Islamic civilization. Civilizations are able to grow from small cities to huge expansions that stretches from Europe to Asia. With strong faith, Islam spread through military conquest, trade, pilgrimage, and missionaries. Over time, as territorial expansion grows, so does civilization. It was during the Islamic Golden Age where culture, culture, economics, and science started to flourish. Scientific and engineering innovations are made and many contributions to the development of Islamic civiliz civilizations. For example, here uh, we can see the picture of Khawarizmi and Yamsid al Qashi made advances in algebra, trigonometry, geometry, and Arabic numerals. And this is the uh, the addition from the from the from the previous slide. Uh, new technology has been invented far more advanced than any other civilizations. Education and law are also experiencing development growth. Islamic civilization at the, at the time was experiencing its golden age and through this time that growth and development are significantly being made all kinds of aspects. One of the significant growth was for the military to acquire the latest technology for the preparation of expansion and it brings huge success. Islamic art and architecture were also the, the one thing that symbolized the development of Islamic civilization. Building and structures were constructed with a defined art that shaped the development of, um, sorry, the development, sorry, of Islamic civilization on parts with the empire. An, an example would be the Mongols' invasion that destroyed the House of Wisdom in Baghdad, which was the center of innovation and maneuver excellence. And this is the house of wisdom in Baghdad, Iraq. So the characteristic of Islamic civilization. Islamic civilization becomes one of the most influential civilization to this day. Its contribution to science and knowledge is something that cannot be doubted. However, a great civilization would not rise to its golden age without a strong base foundation and characteristic. There are characteristics within the Islamic civilization that help the society to advance its, society, its civilization and rise to its glory. Please next. The characteristics are, the first is Tawhid. The Muslim civilization was based on Tawhid, which forms the very core distinction of other civilization to the Muslims. And the second one is, this next to and the second one is universality. The contribution of this civilization is open to all people of the Muslim Ummah, regardless of their ethnicity, color, and race. Next. 
And the third is moderate rationalism. Islam does not support any kind of extremism in any aspect of our life. Instead, it encourages society to practice moderate moderation. And the fourth is tolerance is one of the most important characteristic of Islamic civilization. Throughout the Golden Age, Muslim and non-Muslim enjoy a high level of tolerance and freedom of religion. And the last one is moral value. The moral value are also important in Islamic civilization. Traits such as honesty, simplicity, justice, equality, keeping promises, and more are the basis of Islamic lifestyle. And the slide will be presented by Marhain. The factors behind the rise of Islamic civilization. The rise of uh, Islamic civilization was due to several factors that led their civilization expansion through Europe, Africa, and even Asia. These factors, such as spiritual power, ability to transform ideals of the Quran to daily conduct, intellectual freedom, political freedom, openness, and the spirit of seeking knowledge. All these six factors contributed heavily on the rise of Islamic civilization. And throughout centuries, expansion has been made across Europe, Africa, and Asia. One of the infamous places that exist in the Golden Ages is the House of Wisdom, which is located in Baghdad. And it is the center of knowledge where scholars, engineers, and scientists exchange and spread their knowledge and invention is being held. One of the greatest breakthrough in the expansion of land was the siege of Constantinople or the modern day Istanbul, which is led to victory of Muslims. And this led to the Islamic civilization to expand further to Europe and where the trade routes are also expanding. Next please. Factors behind the decline of civilization. The decline of Islamic civilization began in the 11th century. The answer to the decline of the Islamic civilization was the people itself. Good moral within the people starting to fade away. Cheating, dishonesty, laziness, and breaking the rule of Sharia are the problems that deeply affect the people and led to the decline of the Islamic civilization. Other factors such as fading of the academics also led to the decline of civilization. Since the house of Baghdad was invaded by the Mongols and the ancient scientific discoveries and books was destroyed, little development has been made to fully recover and bring back the knowledge that were once destroyed. Over the centuries, the Islamic civilization has lost many of their territories, other growing empires such as the British Empire. In the end, the Islamic civilization ended with the fall of the Ottoman Empire in 1918, marking the end of the Islamic rules in the world. So here is the conclusion. Sorry. Uh, the spread of Islamic teachings and their bringing progress all, at all times, both from a religious and non-religious perspective in the form of science. Various expansion of the Islamic civilization's territory have resulted in various nations and cultures. Experts of Kalam and philosophers from Islam were born, such as Ibn Khaldun, Ibn Sina, Al-Kindi, and Al-Farabi. And the suggestion that Islam and the civilization had built in the past has been giving massive investment to the attainment of Islamic civilization in the modern world today. Therefore, it is a must for us to accept and to respect the differences related to anything, such as religion. So thank you for your attention. Uh,
And thank you for your attention. Is there any question? Thank you for the speak for the speaker. Uh, question. So uh, we will move into the Q and A session for all the participants who wish to ask. May I raise or use the Zoom chat feature? Uh, my name is Yasara Simolana. I want to ask a question. As you said, uh, traits such as honesty, simplicity, justice, equality, keep prom keeping promises, and something else, uh, it is a moral value. What is the relation between them, and what is the example? Thank you. Uh, excuse me, Yasar. So the relationship with, between simplicity and the others? Yes, Nadila. Okay, and the you. example. Thank you. So I'm going to answer the Yasar question. The relationship between honesty, simplicity, justice, justice, equality, and keeping promise is basically is a value that have that have to be in in human in human body. So the human will live in peace, and the human will achieve its glory. And so, if the human has the trait the traits of honesty, simplicity, justice, equality, and keeping promises, they will live their life with with joyfully and they can be a very very happy person as well they will be uh, it the human will be very happy and and it can be a very wise and as uh, we know that human is the lead in our in the lead of its body itself so it can be it can make the body very very happy like in the islamic like in islamic of lifestyle and for the other members maybe you want to add thank you So for Yasar is to answer already answer your question. 
Yes, Nadila. Thank you. Thank you, Yasar. Is there any question for all participants? Okay, while we are waiting for other questions, uh, I, I, I would I would like to ask the speaker about your opinion. So, what do you think in this in this freedom era? Uh, is it necessary to have uh, the Islamic civilization? Yes, that is. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, can I ask? Yes, okay. Uh, so the al khwarizmi is the founder of al algebra, right? And why the name of the name of that science is algebra, not al khwarizmi like other scientists. When when the scientist is found a formula, it becomes with her with her or his name. Thank you. Uh, I'm from group five. I think uh, I will answer uh, Rehan's question. Uh, Rehan's question is about our opinion about um, if if Islamic civilization is necessary or not in this modern era. Is it uh, correct, Rehan? Yes, it's a, it is. Um, so uh, based on my uh, based on our analysis uh, over the past uh, weeks, um, um, Islamic civilization um, will rise again it is not it's not it's not um it's not my opinion but it is written in the quran itself um one day um the islamic civilization the caliphate uh, will rise again um after uh the great war and um uh, the muslim countries and um the civilization itself with the sharia law will uh, come again will come to will come to life again. And if you are asking us about the necessaries about uh, Islamic civilization, yes, I think uh, it is uh, very necessary uh, because as you know, Islamic civilization uh, brings light, brings darkness into light, where our world right now is, uh, I think it's on fire um, with uh, many dirty wars and never ending uh, war solutions. And I think uh, with uh, Islamic civilization, I think it will uh, bring back uh, those uh, light in the darkness that we are in. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, but uh, I have additional question. Uh, <clears throat> if it is necessary, what kind of efforts we for, from us as Muslim can can help to realize that statement? Well, as Muslim, um, we can uh, do a lot of things uh, in order to um, to uh, make 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 it uh, come true. Like, for example, if we don't have any, if we're just a normal Muslim uh, that is uh, still studying, uh, 
and um, so um, contribute uh, what 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 we as Muslim uh, actually do in our daily lives. Like for example, um, tolerance and uh, maybe uh, studying in, in in studying in in the university, as it is uh, uh, once mentioned in the Islamic civilization that. Even the first university comes from the Islamic civilization itself, meaning that um, knowledge and academics is very important in civilization. So we as Muslim right now, we can contribute, can contribute by uh, studying and contributing to, to, to the knowledge itself and being a good Muslim. I think uh, this is one of the examples that we can do as Muslim. I also want to add uh, Marhain's opinion. So we can add our faith with uh, Salat and then read Al Quran more often and do Jakat or Sadaqah. So basically, our humanity, our Islam, our religion, our Islam religion will be strong enough to face the modernity. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, excuse me, can I ask a question? Yes, please, Ijaz. Mm -hmm. uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Izal Fiddin Irni. I am from group one. So during the golden age of Islam, when we have almost all the knowledge of the world, do Islam have an alliance, like any alliance of any kingdom, like so they could share their knowledge and prevent when the Mongol burned the burned the library to maintain the knowledge. Thank you. Um, I think I will answer uh, Muhammad Izarafidin questions uh, straight away. Um, can you hear my voice? Yes, I can. So the alliance between um, Islamic civilization back then, when um, when uh, when we have uh, when we still had the libraries in Baghdad, um, the Islamic civilization uh, stands strong at the top, and at the time, at the current time, we don't have any. Um, alliances uh, regarding um, um, knowledge or um, maybe uh, an alliances, an, an alliances for war because um, in Europe, we are still uh, fighting the Crusades. Um, if you know the, the, the Holy, Holy War and the Crusades War between us and the Europeans. And in Asia, um, the Mongols are uh, in, invading uh, many places, uh, so may, such as in um, uh, in Central Asia, uh, and unfortunately to go to um, uh, Baghdad itself. But if you are asking me, is there uh, have if Islamic civilization has any alliances? Well, yes, they do, but not in the not back then. Was actually near this time in 18 in the 19th century in the 1800s uh, the Ottoman Empire uh, alliances with the German uh, Empire back then um, to uh, they actually have a good friendship between those kingdom uh, the Ottoman and the German Empire and they were together against the the uh, the British the American and the uh, France uh, to, to 
stand strong together to build uh, railroads and uh, other uh, businesses. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Um, I want to answer Afif Muhammad questions um, about why Al Jabar is not titled Al Khawarizmi. So, well, first, uh, I would explain about the world. Uh, the word Al Jabar first. The word Al Gebra comes from the Arabic Al Jabar which means the restoring of broken parts from the title of the early 19th century book, film Al-Jabbar wal Mukabala, or the meaning is the science of restoring and balancing. And the reason why Al-Khawarizmi Al-Gebra with Al-Khawarizmi is because he wants to title it um, the way it is. So, so because it is so because it is mathematic, so that's why he didn't name it uh, by his name, but with algebra, because the meaning is the restoring of broken parts. So for Afif, is, is it answer your question? Uh, yes, thank you very much. So we'll, uh, we will yes, wait. Uh, My question: You can use the rest and all these things in future. Okay. So we will wait. Wait while we will wait for the question. We will show the video of. The, the video that related to our topic of this presentation. reason and faith i'm sorry can you hear the voice of the video yet or not yes, yes we, can. we can okay thank you since time began humankind has tested what it knows against what it believes what we don't know becomes the tension the driver of human progress i'm Eamon Giran, a historian and writer I've traversed much of the Sahara and the Middle East in the footsteps of Ibn Battuta, a 14th century Moroccan who traveled three times further than Marco Polo. Like Ibn Battuta, I've recorded the... ...sights, sounds and scenes of the medieval Middle East for this great course on the history and achievements of the Golden Age. We'll rediscover Baghdad's House of Wisdom, an amazing center of learning and discovery that was a source of inspiration for the European Renaissance. We'll follow Al Jahiz, an Arabic writer who discussed evolution a thousand years before Darwin, and Al Khwarizmi, who brought algebra and algorithms out of the darkness into the light. And did you know, more than half the stars visible to the naked eye have Arabic names. Today, many of us look at the Middle East through the broken panes of contemporary history. But there's so much more to see. The history so and the, the second video, which words stand greatest Muslim invasion.
Muslim history is overflowing with awe-inspiring creations in the realms of art, architecture, and literature, but it's also filled with many significant and world-changing inventions. Here are 10 of them as reported by CNN. Number 10. Surgery Dr. Al-Zarawi literally wrote the book on surgery about a thousand years ago. It was used throughout Europe for the next 500. He's also credited with inventing forceps and figuring out that cat guts make great dissolvable stitches. Number 9. Coffee The first pot was brewed in Yemen in the 9th century. In the early days, it helped Sufis stay awake for their late-night devotions. The beverage soon began to make the rounds in the area and finally ended up in Europe in the 16th century. Number 8. Flying Machine Long before Leonardo da Vinci started dreaming of flight, Abbas bin Farnas was actually trying it. He built his first flying machine in the 9th century, and for a little while it worked. A very little while. He covered his body in a bird costume, guided himself into the harness, and told the crowd, by guiding these wings up and down, like the bird. Number 7. Univo in 859. It was established by Fatima Alfiri, a young princess, nearly 1200 years later, and it's still going strong. Number 6. Algebra. Whether you want to thank him or blame him, all the credit goes to Persian mathematician Al Khwarizmi. He penned the treatise that defined a new algebraic order in the 9th century. Number 5. Optics. Prior to the discoveries of Al Haytham in the year 1000, It was widely believed that the eye itself emitted the light that makes sight possible. He set the record straight, proving that it takes in light that is balanced off other surfaces. Number 4. Music Okay, not all music, but many from the Middle East contributed greatly to its development. The lute and the rahab, which influenced the creation of the violin, were both introduced to Europe by Muslim musicians. Also, the scale we use today is said to come from the Arabic alphabet. Number 3. Thankfully, around the year 600, the Prophet Muhammad reportedly had had the good sense to fashion one out of a twig. The trick in the 12th century that has been using heavy objects, driving internal combustion engines, and creating bicycles. Number 1. Hospitals. The earliest known versions of them began to pop up in Muslim world late in the 9th century. They had centers for teaching as well as patient wards. So there are the videos which related to our topic presentation. So for the participant, is there any question? Rehan, please make dialogue yes, more active, please. Rehan. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry because uh, there is a problem, connection problem. So for all the participants who wish to ask, I, I just want to remind that you can use the rest question on our Zoom chat feature. Especially Nadine, for Nadine, member Nadine, from Nadine. the group. 
for the group uh, group two, group six, and group seven who have, who have not asked question. Please, Nadine, more active again. Like in the first meeting, Nadine. Um, yes, sir. Maybe the other friend want to ask the question so they can get active too. Uh, well, well, we, well, we are waiting for the question. Uh, I want to ask regarding to the video about the music for in the in the in the second video could you uh, elaborate more what is the relation of music mu civilization and music because uh some 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 ulama uh, says that mu music is prohib prohibited Thank you, Raihan, for the question, and I want to answer the question. So basically, music has the role in in civilization, the Islam civilization. So uh, as we know, and in the Indonesia itself, that uh, Islam and, and the music is become the media or the medium to to spread the Islamic religion itself. And by that, people will know the religion of Islam because of the music. And Indonesia, yeah, as we know that there is there are Sunan who which who, who is introducing the religion of Islam from the music itself. Thank you. Maybe from the other friend want to add opinion. Yes, Rehan. So, Rehan, the uh, yes, answer thank you for, for the for the answer. Okay. Rehan, Adin, Rashen. Uh, okay. So, I want to pass. Uh, as I can see on your slide. Oh, wait a minute. Why my voice is okay? Uh, my voice is not clear. But... Okay, good. Okay, so it's on your slide. You talk about moderate uh, rationalism and tolerance. So I want to know uh, from each of you. Uh, what kind of uh, point of view that you have about the uh, woman operation? suppression and repression in Islam since it's quite related to that topic. And what is the limit? Well, because uh, what is the limitation exactly? Because uh, sometimes uh, people who doesn't know much about Islam and they know uh, some rules in Islam, they thought that uh, the rules are too complicated. The, the rules are, are to um, make them have limitation in life. So they don't live freely. So what is your op uh, opinion from each of you about this um, problem? Thank you. Excuse me, Nadine. Uh, uh, what is the woman, I don't know what it's I mean. You said about woman, what? I cannot hear it clearly before, I'm sorry. Uh, 
uh, I type that in the chat box. Okay, thank you, Nadine. Not about what uh, woman contribution, maybe Nadine. Um, yes, sir. But what I ask is uh, more like uh, the limitation that women have uh, in the point of view uh, of the people that didn't really know about Islam, Islamic rules and Islamic um, Sharia and all of that. Is there anyone is, is there is there anyone who is to ask questions anymore? All of you can ask. Okay, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Alta Fahmadi. I'm from Group Two. Uh, I'm sorry, I can I cannot turn on my camera because in Jakarta the the signal is unstable. And my question is based on your presentation. There is you you mention one of the moral values is honesty and can you mention uh, what kind of ibadah that uh, can increase or give us more about the honesty itself thank you Um, okay, so first I'm going to uh, answer Nadine's question. So Nadine asked two questions. The first one is about woman suppression, woman oppression and repression in Islam. And the second one is um, there are too many rules in Islam. What is your opinion? And I want to answer the second one, which is there are too many rules in Islam. What is your opinion? So in my opinion, um, um, there are so many rules in Islam because Allah loves us. Allah loves uh, his ummah. So I feel like, uh, <coughs> sorry, um, there are a lot of rules. It's because he wants to protect us from um, his forbidden. So that's why uh, we have so many rules. And uh, I guess it's not too many. If, if we do it in everyday life. I hope I answer your question. Thank you. Uh, okay, it's really thank you. But uh, what I uh, really ask is, uh, for me, it's not that 
much um, rules just like you but some of people that doesn't know about islam uh, who are not born uh, as a muslim uh, think that in our religion that we have too much um, rules uh, starting from how we eat how we sleep how we do our everyday life so they think it's just too much but uh, so what do you think about it Uh, well, so as you mentioned before, uh, if it's based on other, if it's based on other, I mean, every religion has different rule. Um, I feel like it's it's fine uh, if other religion have um, different have different opinion with our religion. So I feel we have to respect their perspective. And again, um, the rules, the rules themselves, um, are to protect us from his from his forbidden. For example, we cannot eat pork. It's because pork has will bring so many diseases to our body. So that's that's it. I hope uh, I answer question again. Thank uh, you. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. So I will answer the other question. Uh, the honesty, can you mention what kind of ibadah that increase honesty? So one of the example that can increase our ibadah is from puasa. That's why I think Pahoyro uh, suggests us to puasa sunnah in every Monday and Thursday. Thank you, out of is there is the answer is the question your question is already answered? Yeah, thank, thank you. Okay, thank you, Alto. To participants, is there any more question? So for Gustiar, please, uh, if you want to ask your question. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Gustiar from Group 6. I want to ask, the factor of the Islam declining in 11th century is <clears throat> good moral value within the people starting to fade away. Why that can happen? Thank you. Excuse me, I would like to answer Gustiar um, um, questions right away. So the question is, um, uh, moral value starting to fade away and why, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So uh, in the Islamic civilization, as I mentioned, in the 11th century, um, moral good moral values are starting to fade away. 
this includes uh, honest, uh, dishonesty, laziness, and cheating, and breaking the rule of Sharia. And why does it start to fade away? Um, there are many aspects uh, of why this could happen. Uh, the first, the, the first one is um, overall. Um, after all, um, we're all humans, and of course, we do. We did make mistakes, and I think um, because of uh, the the leadership in in the in the in the in the, in the kingdom or in the dynasty itself is, uh, is has weakening. Uh, maybe, for example, the government also does uh, dishonesty. For example, corruption and um, collusion and um, such as uh, those stuff and. Obviously, uh, the country will become uh, corrupt, and uh, therefore, uh, over centuries, uh, this has happened uh, for a hundred of years uh, during uh, the the fall of the Islamic civilization. And at the end, um, I think uh, they are not they are not able to to to, to keep uh, their uh, government uh, straight because. Uh, those people in the government is uh, has has been uh, corrupt. Uh, I think uh, that might answer your question. Okay, thank you, Marahim. Answer. So I want to answer the Nadine question. First question: the woman oppression, oppression, and oppression in Islam are in our opinion. So, in our opinion, the woman oppression, oppression, and repression in Islam is uh, probably the, the the perspective of that is mistaken because woman in Islam is positioned on such high and 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 noble place until they were mentioned three times by the prophet. So the the, the woman is very very under uh, the very very in noble place. So basically, that uh, the uh, the the, pers the perspective of oppression, oppression, and repression in Islam is basically because the people itself or the the woman itself, because maybe they uh, they show the aura to the guy or to the boy who is not the muhrim, muhram. So maybe the guy or the other people is get their get their lust, their lust to see the human aura. So they are. But if the people is uh, see the perspective of women oppression, oppression and oppression in Islam, they were mistaken. If we see it in the perspective of Islam, because you, uh, because woman is very is in noble place, and Allah, uh, Allah, Allah, place human in in very distinct matter of feminine. So that's it, our opinion for Nadine is the question enough, the answer enough. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Nadine. So please, for the other. Uh, there is one group left who maybe that have not asked, that has an asked question. As it is uh, group seven. So please group seven, deliver your question before we, we move into the next session.
I want to ask once again for group seven. Uh, <clears throat> oh, wait, that ha that hasn't asked any question. So please deliver your question because we need to move into next session. Thank you. For the rest of participants who wish to ask more question, uh, it is also allowed to use the Zoom chat or the or the recent chat. Thank you. Hope participants. Uh, is there any question more? Um, uh, I want to ask to kelompok lapan. I want to ask, uh, I'm Talita Ramakbari from kelompok tujuh. I want to ask what is extremism that you mentioned in the slide? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Talita, for for the speakers. You may deliver the answer.
So I want to answer Talita's question. So extreme in our slide means the holding of extreme religious views usually referred to an ideology which considered to be different from usual behavior of society. And for example, is uh, PKI or Partai Komunis Indonesia. That's uh, the example of extremist. I hope I answer your question. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Truly. All participants, is there is there any question? Okay, and if there is not, I would like to say thank you for all the speakers and all the participants. So we will move into the next session. So I will return the face from my Kroheiro. Kroheiro, please. Okay, thank you very much, moderator and all speakers and also all audience in participating this presentation. Yes, I agree with all presenters that uh, in talking about the contribution of Islam to the development of the word civilization is uh, still process or maybe a never ending process. But importantly, I think we also can understand what uh, should we do as a Muslim generation in the context for contributing our expert, our skills, our future yeah, about the world civilizations. You know that the problem of the world civilization in the maybe in review or maybe highlights from the aspect of science and science and technology like maybe uh, you know that about the nobel yeah is there the nobel is from islamic scientist or maybe islamic muslim scholar this is part of the Maybe problem, yeah. To easy answer, who is or who are the Nobelists from Muslim scholar, especially from Indonesia. But in the context of other aspect of the international relation about the peace, moderation, or maybe peace value, or maybe tolerance, or in the context of the religion of man or human being, I think Islam is very good, yeah. including from Indonesian Muslim society. So that's why uh, many many Muslim, yeah, many scholar in the context of now, yeah, also. Uh, sharing about their ideas from Islamic teachings in deepening maybe views yeah, about the Islamic contribution. We really understand that um, Muslim contribution, of course, yeah, many challenges and many or opportunities in the context of humanitarian humanitarianism yeah or maybe Islamic philanthropy yeah. Pak Khairul also has a maybe good exploration about the inspiration yeah like in the chat yeah the uh, Islamic philanthropy in Muslim Chinese, yeah, Chinese Muslim 
community in Surabaya. And also Pak Khairul uh, want to publish the article from the result of the presentation in the lecture, yeah, in the semester from other groups, other class, yeah, in reporting the result of the research about the digitalization of Islamic philanthropy in the aspect of active effectiveness and efficiency in management of zakat and wakaf. This is part of evaluates or maybe uh, to understand about what the real contribution of from Islam community to the world civilization because we we know that in talking about the aspect of the world civilization is not only related to the aspect of uh, science and technology but also at the aspect of daily life of human being in the world like in aspect of culture economic social and politics so that's why we also always maybe give pay attention like the election of the United States. This is, uh, I think, also many impact for Muslim society. So that way we also maybe wait the last of the election from the biggest country or maybe the uh, in here. like from America or maybe in China in the context of their maybe their contribution in the world is so good in the aspect of maybe international international politics and something like that. Once again, Islam is always support and encouraged to us to, uh, to be maybe contributor also, yeah? it's contributor for the world civilization. Islam as rahmatan lil alamin is part of the general concept from Islam to make or maybe uh, to contribute to make the world civilization the prophet of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam from Mecca to Madinah I think generally spreading Islam rahmatan lil alamin. This is part of the real contribution from Islam. But in the context of science and technology, one skin, yeah, we to think again and again how about our contribution as producer as contributor is very very good to evaluate again and to always maybe always to realize or maybe to make best contribution i think we need to research and to study to review, to evaluate, so that we can contribute for making or maybe for contributing our world civilization. You know that we also understand what 
and need in their life from day to day from era to era i think about the IT, information and technology is very important for us to contributing, uh, to contribute the best. So that's one skin. I think we can always making uh, make maybe the best preparation. Also from the best information or well prepared, well information. Well informed. Maybe we can understand what the indicator of the word civilization. In all aspects of the word civilization. Maybe in the context of uh, to solve the problem of pandemic corona from Islamic contribution, maybe from Al-Quran and from Sunnah, Rasulullah, from Hadis, yeah, inform us to solve the problem of pandemic Corona. Like from uh, Islamic contribution, I think uh, from doing our praying, like sujud, yeah, sujud, is part of running to solve the problem of pandemic corona. Yeah. So that's why we always to sujud to, to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is uh, important for us in contributing or maybe in solving the problem of pandemic corona. Uh, of course, yeah, for the victim, yeah. and I think all aspect we always to think uh, what uh, our contribution from from uh, Islamic society in the academic aspect we also can analyze maybe why maybe are the scholar from non-Muslim society also contribute about the about the making of ranking about about making a ranking or the level of campus in the world this is part of important for us we always start from non-Muslim society to maybe to make best civilization or maybe best ranking and something like that. In this context, I think we need also to think as initiator. Like the inspiration from the presenter in men in mentioning the muslim scholar in the early of muslim in the early of islam like ibn khaldun ibn sina ibn batuta and something like that yeah from this inspiration i think how should we do to continue our contribution from Islamic inspirate, inspirators, from Islamic teaching, from Islamic value. Islam as Rahmatan Lil Alamin, I think, make us to think again how we are as contributor of the best civilization in the world. And also, not only in dunia, but also in akhirat. I think the solution from us, from Islam, inshallah, we need to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to make Allah bless us. 
or give us to make easy in contributing the best from us yeah and blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also the second one we always to study hard we always research we always uh, always reading or maybe improving our skills our knowledge our capability to make the best we are ready uh, we are ready to compete yeah, and synergy or collaborate one to another this is part of important for us in contributing to the world civilization inshallah yeah. from praying and our efforts or maybe our working inshallah we can achieve it so try and try and with the result of our our best inshallah this is part of our conclusion about from Pak Khairul. I think enough. That's all. Thank you again, moderator, speakers, and audience in presenting or in discussing the topic. Hopefully, always beneficial, always useful for us. Inshallah. So, please recite Alhamdulillah together before closing our meeting. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Asyadu ala ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilai. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.